just wanted to talk a little bit to you today. It's it's good to be able to talk to you again. I'm going to talk about the inner light. This is something that Jesus certainly proclaimed himself to be. As I've said many times, scriptures point us to within us. Light certainly can be a metaphor, the sunlight, the electric lights that most of us have, but there's a more important intense light that is within us that the outside light can be a metaphor, can point to. These scriptures I want to go over are from the 8th chapter of John, verses 12 through 20. I really enjoy following the teachings of Jesus to proclaim to y'all. I enjoy anything that's got to do with how Jesus points us to many, many things if we will listen deeply to his teachings and if we will not just take the outward words sometimes avoiding a literal interpretation, but more a spiritual interpretation because that was certainly what Jesus was doing in revealing God the Father, as he called him, God my Father. And Jesus also said that this God was spirit. And so... Jesus, in saying, in being the Son of God, you might could also say the Son of Spirit or the Son of Light, a very deep way of seeing who he was. But in verse 12, when Jesus spoke again in, to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Again, this is talking about an inner light. Jesus was, from all people's eyes, the way they looked at him back then when he was teaching, they probably understood he wasn't talking about he was the the light like the sun or they didn't have street lamps people had to have some kind you know they had candles that they used when they got about in the darkness so Jesus is using this metaphor of light to talk about the intense light that he is within us that we can see things we can understand things. We can perceive. So many times in the gospel according to John, we have to understand when he's talking about light, he's talking about perceiving. And we have to have that inner light in order to perceive, which we might say means understand, understand deeply. Certainly the Pharisees didn't understand most of the time what Jesus was talking about. Their idea of God was mostly up in the heavens, God, and created the world and all of that, but they, they would not accept anything that said that Jesus was the Son of God because they didn't understand it. They didn't realize that he's the son because he, he is certainly devoted to the, he who he called father in his life and that he got around through the world, the darkness of the world, because he had the light from God. And so he just says, I am the light of the world. In verse 13, the Pharisees challenged him. 
here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. This was going from Judaic laws about, you know, how many people had to confirm when you said what you said that it was true. And they would say you had to have at least two witnesses to confirm it. So they're saying since Jesus is speaking on his own here that he's only one person, so his testimony could not be valid. He does not have those other two witnesses. Jesus always had an answer for them when they questioned him. In verse 14, Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. Jesus exhibited great authority any time he spoke. He knew that he was not just plain human being, that he was also had divinity in him, and that he came from the divine presence of God into the world that was dark. So he's just saying, I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You know, in our common conversations, we, whenever we're talking sometimes and people are listening or trying to listen, not understanding exactly what we're talking about, they might say, well, I don't know where you're coming from. You know, you're, you, you, I can't understand it. You're just too deep. Where are you coming from? Jesus was sort of hinting at that here. That they didn't know. He says, I know where I'm coming from and where I'm going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. So when they listened to him, if they had an idiom kind of like we have, they might say, well, where is he coming from? This is human being that seem to be claiming that he's coming from God. And they didn't believe that. Verse 15, you judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge... My decisions are true because I am not alone. No matter how many people Jesus ran into on the road, sometimes they didn't understand him, they didn't listen to him, and they just walk away. And Jesus was leading a very lonely life because he was having trouble most of the time, even getting his disciples to understand what he was saying and what he was teaching. So he seemed to be one against the world, the darkness of the world, which doesn't necessarily mean like when it gets dark at night. The darkness that Jesus was fighting was the darkness within people. Just like we have darkness sometimes within us. We get up in the morning and we stumble around, but it, that's not the real darkness that we confront. The darkness is a spiritual darkness. And if we have a spiritual darkness, you might as well say we live in the darkness the spiritual darkness. And when we live in that very much dark in our minds, in the way we think, it affects our feelings. It, it affects whether we're angry or rather we can forgive somebody or treat people fairly. If we have darkness within us, we're really not living because life has two spears 
the outward life, the worldly life, and then the spiritual life. And if we have darkness in our spiritual hearts, then we are dark. We're living in darkness throughout. We're really not not living. And Jesus is just saying, you're, you're judging me on human standards, trying to understand me as a is a human, but I'm more than just human. I'm spiritual. He didn't come right out and say that, and he warned his disciples about claiming that because he knew that when people started uh, getting a an idea of what he was saying, that they were going to come after him because he had many, many enemies who certainly lived in the darkness themselves. But Jesus was fully enlightened. That's another word that has something to do with what we're talking about today. When someone is spiritually inclined and live their life with a light within them that shines out from them, then we can say they've been enlightened. Jesus says, his decisions are okay, what he does, because he's not doing it by himself. His teachings was from the Father. Everything that he did was the Father doing it through him and by him. So he's just saying, I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law it is written, this is verse 17, in your own law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. But my other witness is the Father who sent me. So he's just using their understanding of this idea of two witnesses and making himself one of the witnesses probably the first time that had ever been done but he had a reason to do it like this he wanted them, them to make sure that they understood that what he's saying is true that he testifies for himself and the other witness is the father God who sent me. And then the Pharisees ask him another question in verse 19. Where is your father? Where is your father? They were always trying to confuse him and trick him. But he has an answer for that question too. You do not know me or my father. Jesus replied, if you knew me, you would know my father also. In other words, if they really knew him and what he was doing and what he was saying, then they would know God. They would actually be seeing God in Jesus. But they couldn't see anything. Remember, they had darkness within them. Verse 20 says, He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. So on that particular day, no one tried to arrest Jesus. It would be coming. And we know from our study of scriptures what was coming for him. But here, I think he won this argument, don't you? He was speaking the truth. He had the light within him, but they didn't. And if we don't have the light of Jesus within us, we're going to have a lot of problem understanding a lot of things, especially life and its purpose. 
Please go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.